Two playoff teams a season ago, both in desperate need of a victory. Mike Grable, the head coach, said this is going to be a street fight. To the end zone, touchdown, the tight end, Jeff Swain. Get down the goal line, it's no doubt, big dose of Derrick Henry with the blocking up front was superb. Takes it in himself for a Titans touchdown. In case you missed it, the Titans picked up their first win and are now preparing for their first AFC South showdown. General Manager John Robinson previews Sunday's game against the Indianapolis Colts. Receiver Robert Woods is the subject in this week's Beneath the Surface as Coach Dave McGinnis breaks down the Titans' longest catch of the season. Plus, he's an NFL tight end but isn't the most athletic one in his family. Austin Hooper explains in this week's Nissan Insider. And many might think being the 12th Titan at Nissan Stadium would be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. But these guys finished fourth in the world in the Little League World Series. All of that and much more coming up on Titans All Access. Derrick Henry, the stiff arm, throws a man down. Get you saw Raymond Burns. Here we go, man. That's a hell of a job. Bring it up, Bobby. Isn't going to be perfect out there. Okay, we got too many guys that just care too damn much. Okay, there is a point where you can care too damn much. We got to let it go and go on to the next play. Fellas, I can't be more proud of you. If you just compete, okay, everything else will take care of itself. Okay, we, we told you we were going to watch and glorify the effort. Okay, well, we're going to make that move back to Wednesday. I want to see everybody in here on Wednesday. Because, because, because this thing, man, it's a long journey. Okay, it is just getting started. It's a long journey. We always talk about giving them a lot of credit. At some point in time, you got to give each other credit because you guys fight your ass off, and I appreciate it. You know how proud I am to be your football coach. Okay, we got Colts coming up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Hey, this feeling we feeling right now, man. Mm -hmm. Let's build on this. Cherish it, man. Yes, Let's build on this. Yes, sir. Let's get it, man. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. Welcome to the BetMGM studio and this week's edition of Titans All Access with Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, as we talk about a win. I love talking about a win, and I want to make an executive decision here. Can we just start with the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week? Sure. Speaking of decisions. Yes. I think what we need to talk about is the decision to receive the ball after winning the kickoff. I surprised us in the Titans radio booth. So the Titans are getting ready to play Las Vegas. Titans win the toss. Mike Vrabel always defers, or almost always defers, his option to the second half. Instead, he says, let's take the football. And it turned out to be a fabulous decision because for the third time in three games, the Titans scored on their opening possession. It was a fabulous drive that featured run and pass and everything in between. And the Titans go down and score a touchdown, so they never trailed in the ball game, Amy. And I think it was a big tone setter for the overall day. Great decision by head coach Mike Brable. You know what else was a great decision? What? Throwing the ball to Robert Woods. True. Yep, Dave True. McGinnis is going to break it all down in this week's Beneath the Surface. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Let's look at Robert Woods and his big contribution to the victory, the 24-22 win over the Las Vegas Raiders at Nissan Stadium. First play we're going to look at, you're going to get a five-man pressure out of this, and with a five-man pressure, you've got corners that are covering outside, you've got a post safety, you get a play-action half boot out of Ryan Tannehill here, very nice cylinder that they put up for a protection. Transcontinental by Woods versus three deep underneath coverage. Jayon Brown, the linebacker on the opposite side, fails to get enough depth, and now watch X receiver Traylon Burks run a deep clear out through the middle, takes the safety and the opposite corner. This is a perfect throw by Tannehill, standing in the cylinder, very strong. It's a perfect key call and a key play dialed up against the Raiders' defense. 41 yards, huge explosive play, very nice way to start off. 
Second play we're going to look at, again, a six-man solid front. Watch number 30 turn and run up the middle of the field to protect against the backside throw that hurt them so bad in this ball game with a deep dig. Tannehill does a really nice job of looking off of the coverage and then throws a perfect deep outcut to Woods. This is a nice counterpunch to the defensive alignment. This is a very good job of being able to adjust your play calls during a game to what the defense is presenting you. An excellent counterpunch by Todd Downing on the play call to take advantage of what the Raiders were trying to do against this type of a set. Next play we're going to look at is a punt return by Robert Woods. It's going to start out with both gunners are aligned single pressed. You got eight up on the front. This is a full pressure by the Raiders. And so this is max protect. Watch Robert Woods here make the first gunner miss and then does an excellent job of making four other coverage people miss for an excellent 21-yard return and a flip of field position. Right at the beginning on the line of scrimmage, Torrey Carter forces number 80 over the pile and eliminates several coverage people at the line of scrimmage. And then it's a good job blocking downfield. Uh, No penalties. Caleb Farley does a really nice job at the 45 to create a secondary lane for Woods. Woods makes four people miss after the initial making the gunner miss and does an excellent job of getting up the field. This excellent flip of field position led to a 48-yard field goal by Randy Bullock at the end of the half, which proved to be very, very crucial to the final score of the Titans winning 24-22. There you have Robert Woods, excellent, excellent addition to this football team this year and a big contributor to the win over the Las Vegas Raiders. I love Beneath the Surface every time it's on. That was pretty good. Thank you. Coming up later in this edition of Titans All Access, John Robinson joins us to talk ball presented by Duncan. We will discuss Robert Woods' performance a little bit more and talk about this week's opponent, the Indianapolis Colts. That's coming up. Welcome back to Titans All Access. The Nolensville Little League team was the fourth best team in the world after making a deep run in the Little League World Series. And then they got to come out to the Nissan Stadium to the Titans game and be the 12th Titan. Was it as fun? Probably not. Was it pretty cool? Absolutely. Check it out. You know, the expectations were huge knowing that we'd been to the World Series last year. So there was a lot of pressure on the boys to perform. You know, we didn't know what it was going to be like. And to make it once to the World Series is a dream come true, but to do it again, pretty magical. It has been unbelievable. I mean, the kids are treated like rock stars. We've done a uh, Vandy game. We did Bristol to the NASCAR race. We've done a sounds game. We're here. Even the governor. Uh, flew a flag over the Capitol building in honor of us and then presented it to us. So it's been pretty incredible. A lot of people don't realize how hard it is to make it to the Little League World Series. There's 6,500 leagues in the United States and you have to be in the top 10 to get there. It's the longest youth tournament that there is in all of sports but it also ends with the biggest and coolest event, so. Sit down with Austin Hooper, and he's this week's Nissan Insider. He's got a lot to say. Carlson, the onside kick attempt. It does take the high hop, but it has been fielded by the tight Hooper cleanly, and the Titans will take over at the 42 of the Raiders. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Austin Hooper has good hands, as you can see securing that onside kick to secure the Titans 24 to 22 victory over the Raiders. 
If you think about a guy as an athlete who has over 300 career catches in the National Football League, and you would think, well, he's probably the best athlete in his family. Maybe not for Austin Hooper, as Amy Wells learned in this week's Nissan Insider. All right, Austin, you come from a incredibly athletic family. Your dad played football, your uncle played football, you've got baseball players in your family, your mom and sister played basketball, so many athletes. Was there ever an option for you to not play sports? Sports just kind of natural, something I, I did. I enjoyed playing with my friends growing up in the neighborhood. I've you know, got the ability to keep going after high school, and here we are. If you're gonna commit to something, you're gonna do it all the way. So when you decided you were gonna play football, did your parents kind of make you go all in on it? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I was pretty intrinsically motivated. I mean, I've always been like a competitive person, so um, it, it wasn't something that they necessarily had to push. It's gotta be nice to have people in your family who can kind of push you and push everybody. I mean, there's gotta be a natural competitive aspect to that with siblings. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my brother, uh, my brother and I were, were pretty competitive growing up. So, I mean, he was a great athlete. I could play, so I mean, he's always, um, it's always kind of at my hip, just training alongside me, playing with me, so it's been awesome having a guy like that. Do you feel like that gave you an advantage, especially through like high school and college? Yeah, certainly. I mean, just growing up in a house with a brother, um, you're kind of always on, so to speak, whether it's video games, you know, jumping off the diving board, who can do you know, a certain kind of crazy flip, whatever it may be, you just kind of have uh, kind of like a competitive atmosphere in the house, so it was fun. When did you realize that you had made a good decision moving not only to tight end, but that you actually had a career in this beyond just playing in college for a scholarship? Being at Stanford, just kind of the tight end position naturally gets a lot of action, a lot of the offense flows through that position. So once I was you know, having some success out there and just taking a look at where I was at versus everyone else in the country, it was like, oh, you know, we, we might have a shot here. So. And then my junior year took it to another level. You mentioned that a lot of the offense flows through the tight end position, which is true in college and it's extra true in the National Football League. Do you like that, kind of the cerebral aspect of it? Because there's so much about an offense that you have to understand to play the tight end position. Yeah, I mean, it's it's known. I mean, you got to know the second most stuff offensively other than the quarterback. So it's it makes it fun and it uh, it's also, you know, a challenge. So it uh, it's a responsibility that uh, that all the tight ends get to have. You know, you kind of get to set the table out there. Quarterback has a lot of stuff going on and as tight ends, we do too. So it just makes it fun to go out there with a the plan and execute. Being with the tight ends group here with the Titans, um, what is it about that room that you like and the guys that you're kind of learning with and coming together with? Yeah, sure. I mean, Jeff's such a great resource. The guy's played a lot of ball for different teams. He sees the game really well. He's been asked to be in a lot of different kinds of roles. So, I mean, he's a good guy that you can lean on and ask really good questions alongside, you know, having Tim in the room, having Luke as our coaches are awesome. There's a wealth of knowledge and, uh, you know, Chig being in the room, it's awesome working with him. He's young, he's hungry, he has great energy. So, I mean, I, I really enjoy our room. When you signed with the Titans, you said that one of the things that really attracted you to this place was the way that other people who had been involved with the team in a bunch of different capacities had kind of spoke about the program, the organization, what they're doing. Now that you've been here for a while, was all of that stuff true? It's been fun to come out here and compete and just, you know, try to find my role and help this, help this organization whatever way I can. It's funny how it ended up being, you know, here. Um, just coming out here for years and finally getting the opportunity to play here. So, you know, making relationships outside the building too. So when I moved here, it's become such a more natural, like acclimation to the city as well as this building. So I'm very grateful. Can the Tennessee Titans win their third straight game in Indianapolis? We'll talk about it with John Robinson, the Titans GM, as we're talking ball, presented by Duncan, next on Titans All Access. Honey? 
Let's Talk Ball, presented by Duncan here on Titans All Access. We're excited to have with us the general manager of your Tennessee Titans, John Robinson. Love being here, Mike. Good to be here after a win, that's for sure. Now, before we move forward, Amy and I want to give a couple of shout outs to guys who were key in the victory over the Raiders last weekend. I got Robert Woods, four catches, 85 yards, a 41 yard catch in there, a 21 yard punt return. When I think about Robert Woods, two words come to mind, consummate professional. Yeah, I mean, ever since Robert has come in here, he's been reliable, he's been dependable. You know, we put a lot on his plate. He's, he's learned the offense, he's tough. You know, he's a reliable target for Ryan in the passing game. He does a really good job blocking in the run game. And then, you know, Phillips didn't play uh, versus Vegas, so he punches in there as a punt returner. Really breaks one to set us up before half to get three points. So really uh, enjoy him being on the team and certainly what he's done for the team. What about someone like Ben Jones? There's already two new guys on the offensive line. Then you add in a new left tackle. Talk about all of the different things that Ben Jones has to do just to get the offense in line. Smart, tough, dependable, captain, leader. He does a lot you know, throughout the course of practice with calls, with checks, making sure those guys are on the same page, certainly in the game. He's tough, like he loves to practice. Uh, he never wants to come out despite any bump or bruise he might have. Just really embodies everything we're about as a football team. And he's really, you know, one of the glue guys that keeps the offense certainly in check, the line certainly in check, but really the team in check. I want to talk about this week's opponent, Indianapolis Colts. They beat Kansas City last Sunday, 20-17. to What were your takeaways from that Colts victory over the Chiefs? Yeah, I mean, I thought defensively they really pressured the pass quite a bit. You know, they moved the front a lot to get some pressure into the pocket, to create some you know, disruption off the edge, to get Mahomes out of there and, and run it around. Offensively, they got the tight ends involved. And then they had Pittman back, they had Pierce back. I think Pittman had eight catches, Pierce had three. And then Taylor and Hines, both of those guys, you know, we know them, we play against those. I think they combined for 120 yards receiving and running on the day as well. How is new quarterback Matt Ryan impacting what the Colts are able to do on offense? He's certainly seen a lot. You know, he's played a lot of years in this league for, you know, for a long time. He's smart. He makes good decisions. He's good with the football. I think he's completed 73% of his passes against Kansas City. He's getting guys in the you know, right calls. He's another one that's a veteran pro uh, that does a lot of things really, really well. What is the challenge to stopping Indianapolis running back Jonathan Taylor? Well, it's tough, Mike. You know, he's he's got, you know, he's he's thick. He's got a nice stature. He's got excellent feet in the hole. He's got an outstanding burst through traffic. And then once he gets hit, you know, hits clean air, he's really got speed to take it the distance. That coupled with the fact that, you know, he's really good out of the backfield catching the football, just an overall excellent skill set for the running back spot. Indy's defense has been really solid in 2022. Are they doing anything different under new defensive coordinator Gus Bradley? Well, you know, Gus has called a lot of plays in this league for a couple teams. You know, I think you see some of the things that he did uh, with the Chargers that he did in, in Jacksonville uh, with that four-man line, moving, attacking. He's getting the safeties involved down around the line of scrimmage a lot. And he's got a lot of weapons over there, you know, with Buckner and, and Grover Stewart in the middle. Pay, Nick Yannick, who he had in Jacksonville off the edge. The, the linebackers are fast. They've got players at every level in the secondary. So he's really using all of those pieces to put them in a good spot. Finally, John Robinson, as we wind up talking ball presented by Duncan. How do the Tennessee Titans go to Indianapolis and win this Sunday? Well, I mean, I think defensively, we got to stand up to this offensive line. It's a big, formidable offensive line. We got to get pressure on, you know, the veteran Matt Ryan. Uh, we got to tackle these two backs. We got to cover their, you know, their playmakers, Pittman Pierce, the tight ends that they're getting involved. And then offensively, like we just talked about, we got to handle that movement up front, all those pieces they've got. Uh, on the you know in the front seven and make sure we're, we're protecting uh, Ryan to throw the ball creating run lanes for Derek so we can run the football John we will see you in Indianapolis division game Mike let's go let's go for sure tighten up everybody more Titans all access coming up right after this
Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio. It is AFC South opener weekend for the Titans as the team travels to Indianapolis. It's time for your game ticket. Here's what's going to happen. I've got it, Mike. Go. I'll take it away. The Titans Road Rally weekend presented by Old Smoky Distillery will officially kick off with a Saturday night pep rally at 16-bit bar and arcade in Indianapolis from 7 to 10 p.m. That's Eastern time, Mike. Eastern Pete. time. Fans can look forward to all kinds of things. T-Rack will be there. Titans cheerleaders will be there. There's drink specials, everything you could want. But the event is limited capacity, so we encourage you to arrive early. Now on Sunday, another tailgate. That's right. Titans fans will gather at the Heirloom at Lucas Oil Stadium from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Again, Eastern, Eastern time. time. Eastern time. Very important. The first 100 fans of legal drinking age will receive two free Bud Light cans. There will be tons of activities there. There's so much to do in Indianapolis. So come on out and see us Saturday night and then Sunday before the game. We love Titans fans on the road, especially in Indianapolis. Thanks to Old Smoky Distillery for making the Titans Road Rally possible. And remember, Amy Wells and Rhett Bryan on the air at 11 a.m. Central Time. That's Central Time on Sunday for Titans Countdown. We'll kick it off at 12.02 Central. The Titans and the Colts in the AFC South. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for being with us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.